script was I have to write a kind of occasional report. So I just finished my first, uh, first one and I was trying to come up with a title. So I, perhaps it's lame, but I came up with From Ukraine with Love. That's which, a good one. Which is a, a, an attempt at a pun on the James Bond film From Russia with Love. Right. So, and the with love is kind of ambiguous. Love of the country, but experiencing love. Welcome to Storytelling Ukraine, the podcast of amazing stories. Make sure to listen till the end, because the best stories are told when the guests are about to leave. And I'm very happy to welcome our new guest, David Livingstone. Thank to, you, David. Good to be here. Thank you. Thank you for finding the time. And the first traditional question, so I can say traditional because this is like episode six that we are recording. So the traditional already question is, how did it happen that you actually have a Ukraine story to share? Well, I, I, uh, I'm an American uh, citizen who lives in the Czech Republic for many years. And uh, we've always had some Ukrainian students at our university where I teach, uh, but especially of late since the war began, we've had a real... Uh, the Czech Republic has one of the highest per capita uh, communities of, of, of Ukrainians arriving, and, and we have a number of students, new students, uh, and uh, also members of the community. So I, uh, I really uh, felt uh, it was important to not only encourage the students who were coming in, a number of, the, a number of them were suffering from trauma and were on their own for the first time, uh, were often younger than our students because uh, my understanding is that the Ukrainian system and secondary school earlier. So I've been trying to support these students, uh, but I also decided uh, it would be good to support the, the general community. So I organized a number of classes, English classes, uh, many of them, of course, the most important is for them to study Czech so they can get work. but also to help with our qualifications. So we, I've organized about eight groups from children to teenagers to adults. So I got to know uh, quite a wide range of Ukrainian people, uh, some there longer, but most of them having come uh, in the last two years. So that was kind of my in. Uh, we also have a, a section of Ukrainian studies, uh, uh, which is part of the Slavic uh, department uh, at our university. I, I teach at Palatsky University in Olomouc, uh, and uh, some of my friends teach there. Some some are Ukrainian, some are Czechs who specialize in Ukrainian language and literature. So uh, I I, sp I started to realize that it's it's great to be helping the community abroad, but uh, that there's going to be a big issue in the future with brain drain that uh, many uh, smart uh, and talented uh, Ukrainians are, are, are leaving the country. Many of them may be tempted to not return, and I'm not condemning that, but uh, this, is, this is just reality that, that we're going to need, we're going to need, uh, I'm starting already to identify with this country and this people, uh, good people to, to, to help uh, when, if and when, <laughs> Peace comes to, 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 to build up the country, not only physically, but also intellectually and, and culturally. So I met um, a colleague from uh, uh, Precarpathian University here in ivano frankivsk and I began uh, teaching online a group of teachers. Okay. Uh, and I did that for about a year with, with another Czech colleague. We took turns. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and then I had the idea, I, 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 I travel, now that my kids are grown up, I, I sign up for, my name is David Livingstone, famous traveler. So it's, it's in my blood, I guess, although I'm not related to him. Uh, but uh, I like traveling and I, I've, I've spent a lot of time in other countries. I spent five months in Kazakhstan a few years ago, which is another story. So I decided I'd look into coming here for a longer period. And I... Uh, got into contact with uh, our mutual friend, uh, uh, Yakiv Bistrov, professor, uh, who's head of the English department here at the university. And, and uh, we arranged that I would come here for three months. So I arrived two weeks ago and just finished my first week of teaching. 
Which, and, yeah. and how are your impressions so far? So far, I mean, the city is lovely. It's it's fascinating. Uh, the history, the different, uh, you know, the, being part of Austria Hungary, part of Poland. Uh, the, the I was just sending some pictures of the synagogue to some of my colleagues who who do Jewish studies and at my university. So I'm quite fascinated by uh, the, this uh, uh, complex history of of the, the city and this region, of course. Um, the the teachers and colleagues have been very welcoming and and uh, and I've really enjoyed the, the students so far. I've been to the theater twice already. I, I, I teach uh, uh, literature and, and Shakespeare, so I got to see Hamlet in, in, in Ukrainian and another uh, Ukrainian classic, the name of which I forgot, The Marriage at, it's from the 18th century, I believe, but it was a kind of modernized version. Sure. So I was very impressed by the theater, it was full of people young and old, so it seems, my impression is that, that uh, theater and culture is, is, is very important to Ukrainians at this, at this point in history, uh, which is uh, good to see. Excellent. That's good to hear. Yeah, indeed. Theater is one of the things important for us and uh, one of the ways that the Ukrainian nation expressed itself, yeah, starting from the you know, early 19th century with the plays and the folk theater and then you know, translating all the classics into Ukrainian that was instrumental for shaping mm. the Ukrainian culture mm. and the Ukrainian language in the modern age. Yeah. And even your city is named after a writer. That's exactly that's yes. amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. True. Okay. So uh, you will be spending here three months, uh, which is you know quite a lot of time. Two weeks is not that you know that long, but sure. maybe you know you already have some first experiences of maybe clashing with the Ukrainian culture or the situation in Ukraine, maybe, you know, some experiences that like when you call home to, you know, your loved ones and they ask you how things are going, you know, some things that you share, like what has been your experience of Ukraine so far? Well, to be honest, I, I don't find it all that different from Czech culture. Um, I think most Slavic countries, or especially northern Slavic countries, people don't look on the surface all that friendly, that people don't uh, smile that much in public, uh, and Czechs are the same. So I'm used to that, and uh, it kind of, I'm from Los Angeles, where everyone kind of pretends to be happy, right. and is a bit artificial, so I, 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 uh, I, I don't feel that out of place here. Um, and I think the people I have got to know are very genuine, um, despite often very uh, tragic stories. They seem to uh, deal with it, uh, it with a with kind of black humor, which, which I like. Uh, people have been very um, supportive and uh, curious about me, but not, not intrusive. Um, so uh, I don't really have any major culture shock. Um, Again, I, I've traveled a lot, so it, it doesn't. I've been to much stranger countries, uh, sure. uh, yeah. so I'm trying to think of something bizarre. I, I mean, my last class on Friday we had uh, was interrupted by sirens, right? And so I'd heard this might happen, but uh, it was kind of a shock. Um, and so the students all packed up and left and told me I should go as well. And so it, it was kind of a. Uh, Scary, but also amusing. They were kind of laughing and seemed quite casual about it. Just all in a day's, uh, yeah. day, day's reality in this country. And of course, we're relatively safe here. But um, So that was uh, probably my biggest um, Ukrainian experience so far. Um, of course, I've been to Kiev before. I, I went there in uh, late August, September for uh, the first uh, Ukrainian Fringe Festival. And that time I took the bus, uh, which was about 24 hours. Oh no! So that was a bit more uh, adventurous, but uh, and especially waiting at the border for several hours. Sure. One woman fainted, I remember. <coughs> um, probably just from exhaustion, or she forgot to eat. I don't know. But uh, it made me, you know, just appreciate how, what what normal people go through on a regular basis, like yourself being separated from your family, uh, yeah. having to. Uh, to travel these long distances and, and uh, 
just deal with it. So I think it's it's uh, it's been good to uh, experience the, the, these kinds of things. Right. So you mentioned the uh, air raid alerts and the sirens, and uh, so that was like a very direct sort of encounter with the war reality. Uh, have you noticed anything else that you know reminds you of the war living here in Western Ukraine? Yeah, obviously in Kyiv there, there was much more of a military presence and, 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 and soldiers everywhere and uh, even uh, you know uh, signs of, of bombing in the past or just yesterday as well of course. Um, here of course on the the uh, what's it, Independence uh, Street yes. uh, you have all those uh, boards or posters of, of fallen soldiers so this is a uh, of course, a good reminder of, of the people who've sacrificed their lives. And of course, just talking to people. I've, I've, I've uh, just, I, I was teaching English to one of the ladies working in the dorms who's, who, who knows very little, but she showed me a picture of her son-in-law who, who just recently died in the war. One of the students from the department apparently yes. just died a couple of days ago. Uh, people telling me about uh, being separated from relatives in the Russian occupied parts of Ukraine or, or just losing touch with relatives in Russia who have bought into the propaganda of, of Putin, etc. So, so obviously I'm still limited. I can understand some Ukrainian and, and, but, uh, uh, and I, I don't want to be too pushy asking people their stories. That's not my, my job here. Sure. But uh, it's something that every, almost everyone or maybe everyone has been impacted by this or like yourself having being separated from your family, which must be very difficult. Yeah. Uh, so apart from the siren that interrupted your classes on Friday, uh, are there any other like apparent challenges that you have when teaching here? Um, well, I think uh, I the the facilities at the university here are, are more limited to. W what I have, we have in, in, at my home university, but I'm, I'm quite easygoing and, and I, I'm basically ready for anything. So that's not, uh, I think any good teacher should be able to improvise and, and deal with, you know, when I first started teaching, we had no, not even the internet. So, uh, so uh, it's obviously, the, you know, the, the, the resources are not as uh, advanced, you know, the, 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 the money situation, of course, is, is more difficult. Uh, I understand a lot of the teachers are struggling to get by uh, with several jobs just to, just to uh, put money, uh, put bread on the table. Uh, but uh, so again, I'm, I'm perhaps unlike some, some Americans who might come here and, and uh, you know, out of the blue, I th I, I've lived in, I, I came to Czechoslovakia in 1990 and then okay. which eventually became the Czech Republic in 93. So I've seen a lot of changes over time there, and, and which is one reason why I think, I hope in a small way I can, I can contribute here because uh, uh, although these, the transition is different, uh, I think uh, uh, I, I've been able to uh, help in a small way with that transition to, to in, in, at least in the educational sphere. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you said you came to uh, Czechoslovakia back in 1990. So, uh, what was the you know the drive? What was the motivation for going you know to basically the opposite side of the world mm -hmm. and uh, you know to a post-Soviet bloc country? Yeah. How did it happen? That's a long story. Uh, it, it was an accident. Um, like most things in yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when I was at university under my undergraduate days in the in San Francisco area, I worked with a Polish gentleman uh, who was involved in uh, ecology and, and collecting books and sending them back to Central and Eastern Europe. And he was from Poznan, Western Poland, and, and uh, he told me I should go teach there. And I graduated from university in 1989, so the year of all the changes. Right. And I'd always been interested in... in uh, Slavic literature, although I was an English major. Um, so I decided to, in 1990 to come to Europe. I traveled all around Western Europe for several months and ended up in Poznan in the summer of 1990. 
And my first di- day there, someone stole all my things. <laughs> okay. So some Polish thief stole my clothes and my copy of James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. Oh, that's like the worst loss. <laughs> Not <It's>... really. It <laughs> seemed a sign from God that I didn't have to finish it. Okay. <laughs> because it was so painful to read. Anyway, uh, so I decided to go back to Bavaria, Germany, where I'd worked as a gardener for a friend. I wasn't a very good gardener, but uh, they were kind enough to employ me. And on the way back, I stopped in Prague, and, and the, uh, my first hour, I was drinking a beer in a pub, as one should in the Czech Republic and Czechoslovakia at the time. Mm-hmm. And some guy came up to me and said, hey, Dave. And he was a guy I'd met in Galway, Ireland at a youth hostel. Whoa. And he was a Czech Canadian who'd just Whoa. come back to the motherland. And uh, he helped me get a job teaching English. So that's how I began. So uh, totally random. And uh, more or less, I've been there ever since. Yeah. Beautiful. So like a whole set of coincidences. And if you things hadn't been stolen in Poland, maybe you would have stayed. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Yes, true. Okay, so I, I hope nothing like that happens to you in Ukraine. Not But, yet. No. <laughs> okay, good, that's good. All right, so uh, uh, you haven't stayed for, for too long in Ukraine, but you have uh, talked to people from Ukraine in uh, the Czech Republic. And obviously, you you have followed the stories and, yeah. and the news and uh, everything in Western media, in the Czech media. So, what do you think? What is one thing that the whole world gets wrong about Ukraine? Well, apart from the obvious that the country even exists and that it has its own language. Right. Uh, and uh, the rich history and... and uh, uh, the amazing architecture and and, and uh, just the richness and you know the size of the country we're talking you know uh, what the second biggest country geographically in Europe um, but also this uh, you know the strength of the people um, I, I've been uh, very uh, honored you know really to get to know uh, mostly so far Ukrainians abroad um, who uh, you know have just been through so much but nevertheless uh, have uh, you know found work or going to school succeeding so real drive to to uh, persevere and continue to 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 live um, so this this I mean of course not everybody but on the whole I've been very impressed by the bravery the the passion of people despite having death uh, uh, around but people re- very alive uh, to 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 life and and to experience um, but again like I said I, I'm only here for for a, a short bit and I, and I don't really have any agenda I just want to kind of contribute how I can but definitely I see This, this trip will be for three months. I intend to come back again. There's supposed to be a Shakespeare festival in, in uh, Ivano-Frankivsk. So I'm, I'm hoping I can come back for that. And, and, uh, but also uh, do some long-term projects uh, supporting not only students, but, but teachers, helping with them with their uh, academic uh, uh, research and, and developing mutual projects and exchanges. So, so this is... Uh, I, ho- I hope to be coming here on a regular basis, so Wonderful. semi-regular. Wonderful. We'll see how, what my wife says. Yeah, that's true. I understand. But uh, this means that uh, after this part one of our uh, interview, we're going to have another one, you know, maybe three months from now, and see, you know, how your impressions have uh, evolved over this time. Yeah. So it's good Sounds to have good. this recording. Yeah, yes, yeah. let's drink to that. Cheers. Yes, cheers. Uh, my mom made this wine. Very good. Yes, very good. But, I mean, maybe everything has a war story around it because this, uh, the grapes for this wine were collected from the garden uh, of my cousin and she is a refugee, wow. so she doesn't live in Ukraine now. So uh, my mom like, takes care of her yeah. house and her garden yeah. and she collected this, these grapes and she made this wine. So, you know, you can find a story <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, everywhere. 
speaking of which, uh, like you have some uh, interaction experience of uh, working with Ukrainians and learning their stories and uh, you know speaking with them, communicating with them. So what is one thing that we get wrong about ourselves? What is one thing that we as Ukrainians don't see that you can see you know, as an independent observer? Maybe? What is one thing that there I guess is? the first thing that springs to mind is, again, related to my job as a, as a teacher. Um, it seems, and again, it's very similar to my experience in, in, with Czechs and Slovaks. We have a lot of Slovak students. Um, is this tendency to kind of... Uh, undersell yourself. Not everyone, you're obviously an exception. And I've met some confident people, but I've also met a lot of people who seem kind of fearful. This kind of contradicts what I said <laughs> uh, earlier, but uh, especially young people. Uh, and again, I understand if you're coming to another country on your own, many of them and younger. But I think it's part of, and I don't mean to offend uh, my host institution, but I've heard that they still have some of these old school methods where students are called up to the front of the class and are kind of asked a question in front of everybody. And if they fail, if they don't say what the teacher wants to hear, they, they get a bad mark. And of course, this is not very conducive to uh, one, self-confidence, two, to, to uh, independent thinking. Sure. So I, I think... Uh, And especially with languages, of course, if, if you're too worried about making mistakes, as you know, uh, you're not going to make much progress. And nobody really cares abroad if, if you don't, if you use the, you know, always use the proper tense or, right. or screw up with articles. Right. Uh, Unless you are in France and trying to speak French, but that's a different <laughs> okay. story. Yeah. But even, you know, sometimes as an interpreter, you know, that's not the main thing is to have it always 100% accurate. It's almost impossible. Right. Uh, but to get the gist, to get the, to get the message across. So I think this, this healthy self-confidence, I don't mean extreme you know, arrogance, but uh, is very important uh, in school. Um, and I think uh, this is something probably that, and I'm not saying all the teachers are like this, but, but it sounds like there's still some of this uh, okay. approach to education. Maybe, maybe you disagree, I don't know. I totally agree. Yes, I haven't been in the Ukrainian system of education for quite some time now, but uh, from what I hear, what I see when talking to students, you know, at some random, you know, open lectures, uh, that's very much the case still, unfortunately. I also found a bit weird, but uh, that all the students are in the same group throughout their university career. Yeah. Which, again, seems rather... Um, limiting uh, because they're not they, they're kind of in a little gang and I'm sure that's good that they develop long-term relationships with their with their colleagues but I think it's also good to be kind of pushed out of your comfort zone and, and meet new people and and uh, also be given perhaps more choice in education it seems here it's it's, it's very fixed what classes you take whereas in, in Western Europe, well, not, uh, your experience in Poland I, uh, and Czech, I think this, it used to be like that, but it, it's changed over it's the changed. years. Uh, and I'm not saying everything, you know, that again, I, I, I feel reluctant to, to criticize the education system because I've just got here, but this seemed a bit uh, conservative and traditional to me. Yeah. But, you know, we're getting there, you know, compared to, uh, you know, with the situation 25 years ago. Yeah. When I was at university, it's changed a big deal. Sure. And there's good progress, at least in the right direction. You know, yeah, no, we're and, moving in yeah, the right on direction. The whole, yeah. Again, I've been very impressed with the students here. I, 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 I was worried the level would be lower and I'd have to kind of uh, adjust my expectations and lesson plans. But uh, I've been very pleasantly surprised. The students have been very interactive, enthusiastic, and uh, willing to, to, to learn. So I'm very pleased. Yeah. That's very good to hear. Especially, you know, this is my... Your alma mater. My alma mater, yes, yeah. exactly. So I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, if you were to write a book about Ukraine, maybe one day you will. Uh, so what would be the title? Well, one of the tasks, uh, my university agreed to let me go, but one of the conditions was they have to write a kind of occasional report. So I just finished my... First, uh, first one, 
and I was trying to come up with a title. So I, perhaps it's lame, but I came up with From Ukraine with Love. That's which, a good one. Which is a, a, an attempt at a pun on the James Bond film From Russia with Love. Right. So, and the with love is kind of ambiguous, love of the country, but experiencing love. So that's my, my, so I hope, so I'm going to write a bunch of these, not a bunch, we'll see how much uh, inspiration I have. But so the first one was just kind of a general overview of a little bit of the history of the place and, and uh, in my own first week of teaching. But I, I also want to kind of report on the education system. I'll be positive as well. And some of the history of the region. And, and while I'm here, I'll, I'll also be going to, in a few weeks, I'm going to Lviv to give some talks. I'll be going to Kiev again, and, and I hope to go to Odessa and, and a couple other places. I want, I think I'll do some online courses for, because we have, uh, what's the university that's moved here from? Kherson. From Kherson. So I want to do offer some online talks for them, and also we have a, our university has a, some cooperation with Kharkiv University as well. So, I'll, but I, I've been told I probably shouldn't go there. Well, Kharkiv, yeah, it's it's much more dangerous than yeah. Ivan Frankiv these days. Yeah. So at least I'd like to do some uh, online, and I think we have a conference also mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll be involved with. So, so yeah, so I I, I uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know more parts of the country and meeting people and 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 and, and learning about the history and, and literature especially i'm interested in, yeah wonderful so make sure you uh, you know reserve uh, some room in your agenda to have another episode recorded after you visited all these definitely yeah places in ukraine after you get to know it better and then we'll see okay. how the questions will change sure. because it's sure. interesting to see that yeah and yeah. the dynamics yeah. of it yeah. From Ukraine with Love, yeah, by David Livingstone. Uh, we have a small closing tradition on okay, this podcast. Okay. It's just started, but every storyteller gets a special patch. All right. It's called Story Ukraine Storyteller. Okay. And you can proudly wear it. All righty. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for thank coming. You. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, David. All right. Pleasure. And uh, you guys, thank you for sharing your time with us. Uh, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the follow button and the like button because it's very important to get your support. And uh, we have uh, a page on Patreon and on Buy Me A Coffee. So if you like it, uh, if you like the podcast and the stories, uh, please, uh, you know, just support the podcast. And finally, the closing words that we usually say is let's make this a world of stories and not of headlines. See you.